Did he step laying down? You don't want to talk to him? Good job. You're the man. No, sir. For sure. That's you. And there you go. That's where it was. They don't need you at the bus. I'm not that sure. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> oh, he's coming over here. Talk to me. <laughs> Watch out. Yes. Um, Father in heaven, we come once again, thanking you for life, health, and strength. We come blessing your name because your name is the only name we can call. The man can be blessed. Realize right now you the giver of all good and precious gifts. Father, as we go through this business of the county, ask right now to let our minds be open. That we will do the what's best for all our citizens. Thank you now. But we won't forget the war that's going on in Ukraine. Storms, earthquakes all over this land and country. We know you're in charge, you know all about it. And Father, we're going to leave it in your hand now as we ask for peace, as we ask for whatever we need. Thank you for some need one thing and some need another. These blessings and all other blessings we ask right now in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Workshop this Tuesday, February 28th at 6 p.m. We have a conference line set up. The number is 1917-900-1022. Access to it will be 32347-POUND. This is not a toll-free number. <clears throat> you may be subject to long distance charges according to your long distance plan. When the chairperson opens the meeting for public comment, please follow the instructions. If you wish to speak, please dial star five. The moderator will unmute your line. It's your turn to speak and notify you by announcing your last four digits of your telephone number. Please announce your name and address. You will be allowed to speak. 
Any person who wishes to address the board regarding an agenda item will be given three minutes for comment. A commenter may only speak one time for each agenda item. So this is a workshop. <laughs> we don't need any motions, no voting, so we'll go on in to number three. This is David Dodd to discuss the Veterans Community Reintegration Project. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Um, we sent with the uh, request a series of short memos explaining what we're talking about. And we'll make sure you guys got them and go from there. But we can now give you a quick summary of uh, what we're trying to do. Is we're getting ready to put in a veteran reintegration program for Taylor County initially. Uh, we've got some property down in Cedar Island that's uh, put the uh, facility on. It'll probably be RV based. So I don't know if you know what a toy hauler is, <laughs> but the, the uh, toy part of that is an ideal workshop for the people who were trained. And the intent is to take a veteran who has had difficulty re-entering society and set them up with a business doing this entrepreneurial spirit of how you can participate in the economy of Taylor County, support yourself and your family and make a contribution to the community. And there is a lot of skills that are disappearing from Taylor County. You know, across the country, most of the craftsman type skills are being lost. And the easiest one we found in Taylor County was sharpening. If you take, if you want to get a knife sharpened, or if you want to get a flame blade sharpened, or if you, you know, stand there the day talking to people and they say, I've got a carbide tip saw, but I can't get sharpened. There's nobody up in town that will do it. Same thing with the last sharpener in Mayo just closed. But we can get a, a guy fully trained and equipped in sharpening for a minor investments in tooling. I mean, tooling to sharpen tools is very inexpensive. You know, the most expensive individual items are four or $5,000 a piece. So we can get a guy in and get him equipped in the shop, teach him the trade, and teach him how to run the business. The other thing we're going to do is bring in the people to do the, the business management to only get him trained in that. Most of you guys who can be considered have no business experience. So we'll give them the basic business experience, we'll bring in the e-commerce people to get it set up because a lot of the crafts in order to be profitable, you're going to have to do business outside the field of So we'll do that through the e-commerce. And the last position that will be of the group will be a videographer. So you know, a lot of this business today is done on YouTube, Facebook, with, with videos. So we'll put that package together. The guy will have his house, he'll have his shop, he'll be fully trained and skilled, and will be up and profitable. When he is, he will learn his shop. He will learn his RV, and he can either leave your step. And we'll keep rotating guys through and scale it up. Okay, so this thing can go national pretty easily. There's a tremendous need across the country for craft type skills. So we look at it as a major business opportunity here, and it'll also go across the country. So that's the basic proposition to do it. We're gonna put in about a million bucks to get the thing up and running. Uh, it should be profitable by the third year. Um, and at that point, it should be an ongoing great business. Or it will, it will go broke. <laughs> okay, that's it. But it's, it's a relatively low risk situation. We had reviewed by people at the VA, talked a little bit, universities on their entrepreneurial programs. There's, this is not a complicated idea. It's really as simple as RVs are low cost housing. You put them in the low cost housing, you can train them to the skill, and it's easy to market. Plus, there's a local 
There was a guy doing it in Perry, just doing Solange years. Who make about 65, 70 grand a year just doing Solange years. If you throw in the hookers for the vets and the barbers, it's another big one. So it's high end kitchen knives or restaurant knives. Takes you two minutes to sharpen them, you get 20 bucks. So it's not a complicated deal. The guy needs to have at least one hand, one eye, and it's preferable that he can work writings himself. We can be wheelchair combined, he can have a prosthetic and still do it. What it takes is the commitment to better yourself in the work. So the, the key to this whole thing is screening out people that are willing to put in the effort to go into the training. So that's what we're in the process of doing. There's a lot of details in the pamphlet. We showed you that the thing that we could use some help on from the county is that you have a great grant person. I'd like to steal some of Cox's time to go after the private investment because I mean, the, the grants because it, it's one thing to put up our own money. We can accelerate this thing with a little outside investment through the grants. So it doesn't have to be two, three, or four, or five people. It can be four, or five, six, seven locations. But depending on how the funding goes, will be how we grow the thing. So that is thing one that we'd like to do. And we talked to Melody, is it? Melody? Yeah, Melody, yeah. but but the grand lady? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She thinks there's some possibility, but she really she can't do anything without your specific direction to do it. So and that's the main reason I asked to come come here and see if we can get some uh, of her time. The other thing is we're gonna put the money into see the brown we could use some basic telephone improvements in that area. The drainage is really health safety issue. Uh, I think this county is working on it now, but it's, if we can get some help on the drainage, uh, that is a major issue. Minor issue is, is a little more stringent enforcement of the building codes for the like, because it's, Anytime you get into a community like that, it will degenerate unless the laws are enforced. So that's all we do. That's really what we'd like to hear from the county. Have you got any questions or concerns? If I could, Mr. Chairperson. Um, as far as Melody's time, she works part time. And we are, she stays very busy with the time that she has. Mm -hmm. And we're getting ready to kick off two more Restore Act projects, which take a lot of, is a big commitment for her. So every every hour of that 28 hours is, is busy with county business. And that's what we're budgeted for. So I, I have a, some, a great deal of hesitation as I already explained to you about trying to pledge any of her time you know, another project. You no, know, there's always a possible answer. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't come and ask. Uh, we are going to, once the 501c3 documentation is done, mm -hmm. we'll aggressively proceed in the financing um, at that point. So, <coughs> we have not you know, approached any of the surrounding communities or anything else yet, but we'd like to start here. And go from there, but if she can't do it, she can't do it. I don't know how we would fit it into her current schedule. That's my only concern. It's because she she just works part time, and and I know how busy I keep her with with the current grants that she she manages. Um, I don't, and I I mean I can't speak for her time outside of the county time. But um, I, I know how busy she is when she's working for us. Yeah. Well, one is there, um, is it possible that maybe she could help him if you were willing to try to write the grant just to tell him how to do it? Or is that more involved in than just somebody can jump up and do? It depends on the type of grant it is. 
Would that be something that you would be? Well, we, 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 honestly, we're, we're, we're running down that path now. If there's a learning curve you've got to go through. And when you try and deal with the government, especially when you're looking for grants, it's amazing how unavailable people are, how <coughs> not able to return a call. <laughs> Until I can get some serious political stroke, uh, and that's, that's the thing we're going down now is to go after the local politicians to say that they will get involved and increase the good. It would progressively climb a new wheel at the VA, but it's uh, any help's appreciated. Uh, I've got a list of contacts we're chasing down and apps to do. We'll just proceed after we're going to start staffing up probably over in uh, Louisiana. Um, we'll find out in March if we're going to do something over there. But we understand if we, if we can do it ourselves, we will. And we're trying, but we're been unsuccessful today. Well, what I could do is is maybe reach out to some of our consultants and see if they if they do any, you know, especially our CDBG consultant, our government services group that has a lot of experience in this. I'm, I'm guessing it's the type of grant that you're discussing, and see if they ever, you know, contract with agency or with startup businesses like this, where they could just review a grant application. Um, if they could yeah. maybe do some consulting, I, I think they're they're fairly expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, a lot of them take a percentage of what they raise, and that's to be expected. Yeah. Uh, the SBA has been is probably the most worth pursuing and the hardest to get a straight answer out. But there, they have a lot of fun set up through the SBA for starting new businesses. Uh, so we're, we're moving down those paths. But you've been down there and haven't been successful? Boy, well, right. I mean, I bet you I'm knocking a thousand doors. And it's usually the answer you get is we are very interested in the program. We'll get back to you. It, you wait 90 days, 30 days, nobody calls back. It, it, you got to have some stroke over the people that are giving it, because they got a lot of people waiting to get money. Is the VA able to help you in any way? They probably at least help them a bunch. They like to, they run through the program, they want the program, but they want to raise the money outside. And quite honestly, I think the, the bulk of the money will be raised. The websites, the uh, community funds, like the banks here in town, and like are all going to participate. So we will bring in funds from there because the whole big scale difference between getting a few thousand dollars and a few hundred thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to do. It's going to take a million bucks um, to get three guys started. You know, we put three RVs down there for the property. You know, we're lucky that you know my wife is a trained psychologist and has been in uh, reintegration with the prison system. So she said, I've done this from the business side for 50 years. So it's not hard to do it in a lot of contexts to give the guy the basic business management skills and marketing skills. But it is getting the people to release the funds, and that's the, the logical one to get I think I can get up to 800000 from them if I get them to answer the phone. Well, you know, trying to help veterans is, is not easy. Mm -hmm. Something that I think all of us are always interested in. Um, I just don't know. Do you, you don't see her having any time freed up any time? Well, it would depend on, I mean, if it's, if it's simply to review an application, I wouldn't think that would take that much time, but I, I hate to commit any more time, you know, as far as writing a grant or trying to administer a grant, I, that's my concern. Well, and she, she's a pretty straight up lady. I mean, she basically said, hey, I, I can't do a thing without the approval, uh, but we got, yeah, so I mean, it's, uh, if she can do it, it would be appreciated. If she can't, it would be nice. 
Dankeschön. Ja, ab, ab Thank you. 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 Thank you.
if the request from Mr. Dahl is that you consider applying for a CDBG grant for this particular venture because... My request was to get access to her time because she knows grant industry and what would be the right way to proceed. And that's the only request that I've got. She was saying that she thought there might be an issue because one of the probable sources of funds would be the community development grant. And that was the conversation. So we're not in here to stir any problem. If it's not a positive for you guys, don't do it. I mean, we're all adults. I would say, Mr. Chairman, if I could, I'd be glad to try to help this group. But I think that we do have a responsibility to have our grants rather focused on the projects that we know are at hand. And we know that those are going to be an assessment that will be asked. So if there's a consultant group that would be able to help you guys, certainly we can reach out and talk to those individuals. But I think in the interest of our grants rather than not having conflicts of interest or things of that nature, we need to keep our focus on the projects that we have at hand. Why don't I have a conversation with Melody? And now that we have a little more information about exactly what your request is, and I can also ask for some recommendation. If this is something she feels like she cannot accomplish in her spare time, or if she realizes it would be a competitive grant between, you know, the county may have some interest in, then obviously she would not want to take that on. If maybe if we don't feel like this is a possibility, we can certainly make recommendations to you of potential consultants who have experience in CDBG. And I know that there are, and now it depends on the size of the grant, but, you know, occasionally a consultant may write the grant at no charge if they receive, if they have a contract to administer the grant. And then they would have their own charge for that. So if it's okay with the board, why don't I do some research and see if I can get some guidance from Melody and then reach back out to Mr. Dahl with some ideas. Yeah, just see if there's any capacity that she might could help this organization, help what it's trying to do. Just got to be very careful. There's a lot of grants out there that don't always mean that you're going to get one. Some of them are, you have to have a match to go with it. And then with that CDBG, I remember when we were talking about the old hospital and I believe we were working with the city trying to get something going there for a long-term health facility or something like that. But the problem was that you had to say how many jobs there was going to be and how much you were going to pay them. And like LaWanda said, if you did not meet that, then you would find yourself in a little, you know, in trouble with that. But if there's some capacity that she can help you in, then yes, I'm all for that. I mean, after all, it would be to help our veterans. And you also, you mentioned the prison system. And this is something that I brought up a while back, maybe last year, I think it was last year, that we do have these inmates that are getting out of prison and they have no direction, no help, no nothing. And so they turn right around and they can't get a job because when they get out of prison, they might give them a bus ticket home, but they don't have anything else. They have no money. And a lot of times they don't have anywhere to go except back into the drug infest, if they're there for drugs, back into that environment. And it's a lose-lose situation. And these people desperately need some organization that can help them have a place to stay, get on their feet, and have a craft or, or you know, be prepared to work and change their life. To be honest with you, that is, in my opinion, phase two of what we're going to do. The prison reintegration is tough. It is controversial. Uh, so why 
tied off, something like that up front. There's almost unanimous support, not unanimous, but there's major goodwill towards helping the vets, helping the local economy, bringing in business to town. Mm -hmm. uh, is a big positive, and it's you know we've had people from Leanne <coughs> do it up there. You know they're, they're building a tiny home community that's agricultural, mm -hmm. and so we can we can do the one. I don't know who to look at, but we could easily set a satellite across the country like that because there is a lot of people want to help the vets. Mm -hmm. A lot of the vets have. The ability to pull themselves up. They just need somebody yeah. to give them an open hand. Yeah. Let me ask you this Have you reached out to our senator and our representative, and also to uh, Representative Neil Dunn? Dunn is on the list. I mean, in fact, I'm going to go down ever as the guy here, and Dunn is the guy who had more political connections than Dunn that I knew. Yeah, I'm going to go harass him and see if he would intercede. Uh, I've tried with Don on several occasions in the past, and he's good at fundraising, but he's not good at help. <laughs> so I'm not optimistic. I honestly think the major businesses is where the bulk of the money is going to come to. And, and we're working out to get on a couple of the national news programs and stuff like that. Then. But we're I'm not going to do anything until after the 501c3 number is solid. Mm -hmm. Once that's solid, then we're you going can to... take that and go. Yeah. yeah. Well, and everybody that I've talked to that has money to give, <laughs> you, have, you got that number? So we've, we've already retained large group to get it done. They say 90 days. I'll be happy if it's done by the end of the year. And we're going ahead and we're buying equipment and testing equipment and working on the training program. So my wife would love me to get a nice shirt and throw them out of the <laughs> But not until we move in. Anything else? Well, let LaWanda talk with Melody and um, <coughs> touch base back with him, and hopefully, you know, something can be worked out. I hope and so. I like what you're doing. Cool when we get this thing going. I, I like what you're doing. I like. I like. You know, that you're trying to help the veterans. And oh, it's, the... it's a lot of fun. So we'll get it done. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, uh, the board discussed upcoming funding for the Sun Trail Grant application. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, I think everybody's familiar with the Sun Trails that we uh, looked into last year. And as you know, this year is a uh, cycle which I believe opens in September if I'm not mistaken. That's what we so we're uh, around six months out in consideration and and so I'm asked to agenda this particular item in consideration for one of the projects that we discussed which would be the um, area around uh, tunnels to Stinghatchee and Keaton Beach to back around to the intersection of Beach Road and Highway 19. And the reason for that is there there is a uh, management advisory group meeting tomorrow with the uh, Big Ben Wildlife Management Area folks. And so, as you know, or I think everybody knows, a segment of that trail would run um, on the uh, or through their ownership along the beach road between the Key Beach and Steam Hatch. So, you know, I, I wanted to try to bring that forth forward and make sure that that was still uh, the topic that that is supported by the board. Or it's not having any surprises um, in respect to um, speaking with FWC about this potential project. Can I ask one question? Which, which one is it that we discussed that was going to go down 19 and then down 98? Is, this, is that a different one than this? Uh, yeah. I think it was along the same discussions, but I think we had to make a we chose one or the other. I mean, right. Our choice was 19, 19. 19 yeah. to 98. Now, that was for the, the 2029. Right. So this consideration is for the 2030, the, the next open funding cycle. So the board agreed last year to submit the project um, along Highway 98 to the county line. 
So that project is, is submitted, as I understand. Yes. This discussion and consideration would be the section that would go from, from the caution line at Beach Road and Highway 19 <clears> around <throat> Beach Road all the way uh, through Keaton Beach to Stinghatchee and, and to Tennels at the trailhead that is this, this room. As we've discussed, incorporate that trailhead and the section of trail that's already down in that area around Keaton Beach. You know, and it uh, does uh, or would include um, areas along the Swarter Board Management and, and this section through the Big Bend Wildlife Management area that that we uh, discussed here. So this this is not uh, to discuss or go back over what was submitted for the funding cycle 2029. This is for the upcoming funding cycle, the, the next submitted. Who would be driving? Who driving this meeting as far as the, to discuss the? This meeting is being hosted by the Big Bend Wildlife Management Area, yeah. management group, they, FWC. And they put that so this this portion. They put this on their agenda. No, I spoke. They they contacted me as far as folks that are stakeholders, as in respect to a ten year management plan that they work out there, and and what that is to do is to prioritize and, and really have the opportunity to discuss those type projects and looking at future public use of their problems. So obviously, a project of that magnitude would, would have an impact on a greater use. And that's why we're having this discussion. And, and, you know, this project may be the very best one, but I think that um, I would like to see if if the other four commissioners have have another idea, and let's look at all the ideas and then decide which one would be the best. And this may be the best, <coughs> but I think instead of saying yes, we're going to do this, let's look at all the options. And there may not be any more options. I don't know. I, mean, I think it's if they wanted to discuss it. There's nothing. To, I don't think there's anything against them discussing it. Or whatever it's yes tomorrow night. I don't know if there's anything against them discussing it. I don't no. think it would say that, you know, that that's what's going to happen next. I think we would still, from our board, we would still discuss, you know, from each commissioner and what their request may be. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't, I guess, if the question is if we have an issue with the discussion, then I mean, I don't have an issue with the discussion at this meeting. But, but it's tough just to discuss the Sun Trail along that path from Generals to Christine had to the beach. I don't have a problem with discussion. Mr. Chairperson, my my suggestion to Commissioner Newman this afternoon is to perhaps take a copy of our master trail plan and and use that as a basis for discussion. <clears throat> um, because that's something that is approved by the board and identifies all the borders that the board supports. And um, and then there's a specific coastal connection, and there's also a steam hatching connection that are listed on the master trail plan. And then the other you know consideration would be is if the project that was submitted this year is not funded, then would the board wish to resubmit that project and the steam hatching project? And I I know at the time we discussed it um, during this the application submittal timeline that staff said there was no way we could we could prepare two grant applications but if one project isn't funded i think it would be easy to resubmit yes and then if the board wished to submit two projects i believe we identified that we could we just didn't have time to prepare that many applications so if once the the nofo comes out i you know i think our staff would need to know fairly quickly is if this is something that the board wishes to us for us to prepare because that would be a uh, pretty significant when will we know if the other one uh, has been accepted so um when the five-year work plan um from fdot is released we should know about that time which shouldn't be too much longer i wouldn't think it just seems like to me that if we've submitted something that was our priority that we certainly would give that a fair chance and if it's not um, accepted then we would submit it again 
Um, and I know when you, uh, you know, you submit more than one, then you kind of muddy up the water a little bit. So. Um, yeah, well, yeah, I think that, you know, I think she just said we didn't have the time to, to, to do the two applications at the same time, but it would be in just one application. I understand what you're saying. That we don't want to, you know, we want to put it out, have one application in, and that kind of be where our focus is versus, you know, letting them just choose what they do. Then we can decide on the one after that. Right. I understand that. Yeah. You know, I guess we would really have to do this, too. Yeah, that's kind of down the line that, you know, that when we see whether we are, are approved for that application, then we would make that decision whether we move forward or not to resubmit or I think as far as Commissioner Newman just wanting to discuss the Well I don't think it's a bad idea to to remind them that we have a master that we have a master plan. Because like there's stakeholders in that and and see if there's any discussion about um, about uses of, of these areas. I mean, I think it's it's a good discussion yeah, sure. to have. Yeah, sure. I know. Right. This is a very good discussion. Having that discussion with those guys. So. Uh, number five, the board discussed residential garbage pickup. <laughs> <laughs> so several months ago, um, at the time of the discussion, I knew that there were um, at least a couple of counties who, that were considering um, RFPs for residential pickup, curbside service. Um, and so I can give you an update on what's happened in some other areas um, close to us. Swanee County did publish an RFP um, and there are several ways that you can craft an RFP as far as curbside service. Um, what they did is they asked for bids for once a week, twice a week. Um, appliances, yard waste, and furniture were, were a separate part of that, of the proposal packet. Um, they did not make a, an award for that, um, even though they did publish an RFP. And as Tommy's here, he can kind of help me fill in the blanks. But I don't know that they won't consider that. So. Um, they, and they actually published their RFP in April of 2022. It did not make an award. So the city of Monticello recently published an RFP and they asked for bids for residential and commercial only. They removed bulk items. And I believe that that is pending as well as far as, as any type of award for that for that RFP. You say city and county have done that? Just the city of Monticello. Um, so what I would say is that there is an interest in curbside service that we could certainly publish an RFP and we can craft it however we, we wish. We can ask for roll-off sites to, you know, a number of roll-off sites to remain operational. For, for these bulk items for anything other than residential pickup and we can see what type of responses we get. And we don't have to do residential and commercial at the same time. Now, what I don't know, and, and I don't know if you recall Commissioner Fiegel, when we questioned this before, do you recall the amount or the number that we were given from one of the contractors? No, I don't. I don't, I don't have any type of documentation. I don't, just, I know when I asked about this recently, I had remembered that back when we were going through this process and we were having these special meetings, yes. okay, that one of the things that we had asked was that, and I think the board agreed, if I remember correctly, that, um, Y'all would go out and, and um, you would look at these possibilities and you would come back. Yes. Because it, I think there was some interest, but I don't know how much interest from this board. I guess it all has a lot of factors to consider. Well, yes. And I think maybe the biggest consideration right now, well, the biggest, one of the considerations is would it have to be mandatory? And my answer would be yes. 
it would have to be mandatory, you know, cur curbside service. And then what happens with the large items? But we could craft a proposal that would ask for a price for either bulk item pickup or um, leaving two sites open for the receipt of the bulky items um, and, and ask for a price for all that. And then we would see if this comes in under what our maximum amount of the assessment would be. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the right answer is. I just know that we discussed this as a possibility when we were going through everything. And I just was wondering, you know, looking for an update, what had happened and, you know, where, where were we with this? Um, and there are, seem to be a lot of moving pieces when you talk about solid waste these days. Oh, yeah. And I've um, attempted to keep my finger on the pulse of what's happening with other counties. I think many other entities are struggling. Part of the part of the issue I think that we're concerned about when we look into the future is our our drivers. Um, most of our our drivers who have their CDL license um, may not be working much longer, and the concern is how do we replace them? Um, I believe it's a much more difficult process to obtain your CDL license than it used to be. Um, that's a consideration, and it's, well, Commissioner English, you probably, I mean, you're involved in the transportation industry. I'm assuming that y'all have the same issues hiring CDL drivers. I'm not even new what's coming into the industry, just say that. You're, uh, you're, you're us, we're battling with rates, I mean, it's whoever's paying the most money. So that's competition for us. Um, definitely, and um, and and I am concerned uh, when our when our current employees stop working, how I'm going to replace them. So that is a consideration. Now, whether or not um, there would be any, you know, a, a private company could do it any less expensively than we can, I don't know, um, because. You know, a lot of our expenses are the same, but there may be more opportunities um, for some of the private companies. But the only way I think we'll know is is to actually do an RFP. Now, my concern was, do we need to wait until our contract for commercial solid waste, the franchise agreement, do we need to wait until that expires and do it all at the same time? We still have a couple of years left on that contract. But I don't, I don't know that that's the case. That we would necessarily have to, have to, have to do that at the same time. Um, so if that's, you know, if, if y'all have interest, that's something that we can look at. And I feel, you know, confident that we could glean as much information from what other counties have done recently, in order to, in order to craft an RFP that would that that would you know get us some information but i don't i don't know if if we want to just publish an rfp just unless we're seriously considering um curbside service because once people answer an rfp if we don't take action on it i don't want them to be hesitant to you sure. know to submit a bid yeah, i think we should you know know for sure and certain what what do we want you know what will it entail but then, you know, I know Wakulla County, they have a pickup. Have you talked with them? How does that work for them and how much do they pay? A lot more. I think Wakulla is, is it at? They've got a lot more people, but they're, they're not spread out like we are. And the farther it's spread out, the more it's going to cost. But we need, if we're going to ask people if that's what they want, we need to have a price to give them. The only way you're going to have a definite price to give them is get some contractors to get a bid out and see what we could, what it'll cost for them to go to every household and pick up the garbage. And then you'll have to wait. Well, that's the first thing somebody's going to add. Wouldn't well, they need to know how many, you know, how many customers they have before they could give you any kind of real number? They'd have to, they'd have to know exactly how many customers, how many people pay in the, the, the fee now. To understand their cost. And they would have to know the mileage <laughs> from everybody's house to their, Site, you know, and then uh, 
What I remember us talking all this over and getting some prices years ago, it was so expensive, we knew people would not go for that. You know what you remember, Mr. Conrad, about it was so pricey that? Well, the other thing too is um, mandatory. There's folks out in Taylor County that don't like mandatory. Oh my God. They're mandatory side of the road for us. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> and another consideration is I, is is the fact that I don't know that a contractor is going to run nine sites for, for bulk items. So then it gets us right back to the same conversation. Well, how many sites would we have for folks with appliances or furniture or, or laundry and where would they be? Because that seems to be where there's some hesitation. Yeah. That's a big shift. Yeah. And, and I, I want to make it clear, I'm not advocating for anything, okay? This is just something that we discussed and from what I remember, we left it with, we were going to check into it and I just had the question, where are we at with that? What have we found out? That's, that's all. Well, I, and I can say, I, I, I truly believe a lot of our citizens would love curbside service, especially if it doesn't cost them any more than they pay now. Um, I think, and, and that's, I don't, I'm not trying to speak for, for our citizens, but I know that I get enough feedback from our citizens that they would love for somebody to come pick up their trash. The concern seems to be everything but the household trash. What happens with that and, <clears throat> and how that would look? This is Tommy Hardy with Pop Sanitation. Um, he's, he's been a great source of information as far as what happens in other areas and, and who's doing what as far as the, the process. And can you maybe give us some feedback? Real quick, I want to apologize for not coming more often than I have. My wife was diagnosed with cancer back in July. They gave her deal December to live. God's grace and, and everything going on. She actually went back to work two weeks ago. The doctors don't understand it, but our, our life has been upside down. The good thing about our business, it kept running even though I was living in Jacksonville with her. And so that says a lot about our business. But to the Swanee County um, proposal, they fired their county coordinator. So what I was told recently is they're going to put it on hold until that person um, gets his pick up. City of Monticello, we're supposed to sign a contract Tuesday night at their next meeting. So we're in that process. But if you look at it, I got my staff going around the county or going around the state trying to figure out who's left, who doesn't offer this service. Gaston County, Wakulla County, uh, Franklin, all of those counties offer it and they tweak it just a little bit. Um, but there's a corridor here that doesn't. Um, and so anyway, but I'd like to have those real, real numbers. And so, but when you look at what does it cost, we bid 1875 in Swanee County. Um, a month, which comes up to right at $225 a year. And that was with, we had some, we came in, we had two different options. One option was, hey, all we're gonna do is pick up trash. But as we know, and, and our competitors didn't realize, I'm from a small county. We gotta have a place or a couple of places to be able to offer um, drop-offs for, for bulk items. And so, and they can do it for free. But we got to run those operations because of one, you're changing the mindset. Um, if you look at your county, if you look at the Sydney Hatsy area, there's not many places down there we don't have a camp. There's some, but we're covered over there. Um, and you look at different parts of the county where more people move in, we're, we're more uh, saturated. Um, and so because the people are used to it, but it's changing the mindset. I didn't have it until I started the company. Now I wouldn't go without it. So well, hold on just a minute. That's real interesting. So what you're saying then is um, predominantly in Steve Hatchin and wherever else, that there's obviously they're still paying their annual assessment here, but in addition to that, they're still hiring you just to, because they're like, wow, that's because they see a need. We're running three days a week down here now. We're buying diesel down here, our trucks are getting service, even the trucks that are running swatting up. Every county that we're in that they get service here. Um, and so um, we're, we're, like I said, buying diesel. We're, we met with somebody the other day to lease some land in this area because we're growing so good. 
In other words, they pay in $225 a year plus the 174. And, uh, and actually, so just so you know, that we can't do it for that 1875. But if we don't do the whole county, it's kind of like, why do you do a franchise agreement? Because I know I'm picking up every house, I can do it at a less price. Our price out there for monthly price is uh, 3656 the one of the cheaper, the most less expensive this house. What will you pick up for that 1875? Uh, we pick up uh, household garbage. Outdoor garbage now. Outdoor garbage. If it goes in that trash can, we'll pick it up as long as it's not. Only if it'll go in the trash can. Yes. Okay. Now we pick up some because of special occasions and extras and stuff like that. But um, we give free churches. We give uh, first responders, any school teachers, we give them three months free. Um, we waive it if you're a certain age because if we have to go up to your house, there's another state. But they cut down Oak Tree to the yard and have it all piled on our road. You're not going to haul that. Now, if they call us, we, we've done all kinds of stuff from concrete to hell. I mean, we're not. I'm saying, but I'm saying just an individual yes. cuts down a pine tree that dies in their yard and piles it up out there, big chunks. Yes. Y'all not going to vote that. Well, if we come into an agreement, then we can do it. We can handle anything you want if we come in with a agreement. But that's not part of that routine, no. normal price, then. That's what you'd have to add that price is. on if they moved the tree out of the yard. What we end up with is trailer loads after trailer loads of busted concrete, trees, trailer yeah. after trailer loads of oak limbs, uh, pine tree limbs, you know, and that kind of stuff at our sites. You, well, you see it, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, yes. And, and that's. But, and that's another reason why we we would have to leave two sites open in a, in a county like this, just like in Swanee, what we proposed, one on the in the middle of the county, one on the bottom end. And when you were talking about distance, if you look at Taylor County, it's actually a great county to have because of look at Four Rivers land, look at FWC's land. When you take all that out, it it makes it more dense than you realize. Yeah, thing has to the parish of Shady Grove. You'd almost have that three slots in Taylor County. If you wouldn't, two wouldn't do it. I mean, and then you'd, you know, no more than they pick up down down the river on the west end, you could handle that part without a slot. But but the rest of it, it takes three slots in Taylor and, County. And we're not saying, hey, this is it. We built a program for Swanee County, and hopefully we're going right. to go through it. So you're charging $36 a month, I guess, for the residential pickup today on an individual basis? So basically what he's doing is there he's got folks are paying the hundred and seventy four dollars assessment plus you're looking at three sixty four hundred thirty dollars plus the hundred and seventy four dollars. I think where where it gets a little questionable is if we request a bid that includes the bulk items, then you know, you're charging everybody for something that only a portion of the people may use. And that's that's where it gets a little muddy for me. And so what we did with Swanee County, they did ask, what's your bulk item price? Right. And so when we did our presentation, I said, wait a minute, you're going to put on $3 extra a month. We'll give you a, a quote for it, but you look at a refrigerator, it'll last you five years at least, should it? So you're going to have to pay for it, pay for it, pay for it. Why not take that out of it? Let those people save the money. And then they call us and we can pick it up if they need it. But then you have a site where they can bring it to you free. So, uh, I mean, I think two questions would be, you know, the public opinion, the pleasure of the public, and cost. Right. Well, Tommy, can you tell us how many how many customers you have in Taylor County now? I should have looked at that, but if I got a guess, we're around 600. So that's a lot more than yeah. a year ago yes. when it was about oh, yeah, we're growing. Yeah, we're, we're running a, a delivery truck down here twice a week, mostly. The biggest question that I have at, at the end of the day, would this, would it save us money or would it cost us money? Because I think that's why we even talked about this in the first place when we were looking at all the options for solid waste. And I think we were trying to get to something that was going to be more cost effective for the county. I think possibly what you would save is 
your one cent sales tax, your capital expenses, because those are not included in the assessment amount. I don't know that they could, you know, anyone could do it, um, offer this service less than the current assessment, but it would, and then you have to remember, you know, we've got that dollar an hour minimum wage mandate that we have to consider every year. Um, so, you know, year one, I don't know. I, I don't know that it would, I, I don't know that it would save us money except for our the capital investment that we make, which is substantial. Yes, it's about 300, I think we're budgeted about $300,000 a year. I that, think all that would have to be factored in. Um, maybe you look at a, a, a longer period of time so that you can factor all those things in. Right. Um, I don't know. Um, you know, my goal is to, um, if we can do it a better and cheaper and different way, let's, let's look at that. Mm -hmm. So we have a lady up in Jefferson County, and every time I see her, she hugs my leg, she cries. Her husband's bedridden, and he has diapers. And so she was having to put that in the back of her car and carry it up there. And so we, the good thing about owning a business, we can do stuff for free. Mm -hmm. And so we help her out, and, I would, and we do that a good bit. But this way, the lady um, has another option. And I, every one of us knows people that either have to rely on somebody else to go to the, to the uh, what we call a mall, to the, the sites. Um, but it gives, it, it frees it up. Yeah. Um, but if it's going to be roughly, I look at quotes all over the state. I look at our bids all over the state. And it's roughly going to be about $19 a month on the low side. And it's probably going to be $28, $29 on, a month on the high side. But throw it out in RFP, see what happens, and, and um, just leave some flexibility in the RFP, you know, where it's not just price driven, it is where you can have service. Now, in the last three bids we've done, we've won on price. So, what well, I'm hearing, you got you picking up 600 in Taylor County, yes, and they're paying us and you, yes. If them 600, if he wasn't there, we'd be getting 600 more bags of garbage or, or more. A week, you know, to, to haul the, to, 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 to the site. So I mean, it's it's a it's a blessing to us to have that. I mean, a 600 loads of garbage that we don't have to fool with, tons of garbage, you know, over a year of time. Yeah. And, and and we are actively in the community. Um, like we talked about last time, the Baptist Association we helped. We just done the Fiddler Crab Festival. We lose money on it, but it's good publicity. Um, and I, I'll get in trouble if I don't say this, but the Combat Marine is March 26th through the April 2nd. We're very active in that down here. Um, and so any, anything you don't need, you can call us and, and we'll come down. Now, Commissioner Moody, some of those people, I know some of them have called me and um, they choose his service. But they sure don't like having to pay ours. That's that's their crop. They want to, the too. ones I've talked to, they want to keep you and delete ours. And we tell them that up front. We tell them, you know, every county we go to, they, this is above and beyond, you know. But the majority of them don't do that thing about it, I guarantee you. Yes. Say you, you giving them a service and saving them having to burn their gas and their time and handle a dirty bag of garbage, they just pay you to handle that. Yes. That's what I'm doing. So, is there anything against putting an RFP out? I mean, I, I've had several folks, you know, citizens, even tell me, you know, hey, if I have to pay a little bit extra and somebody comes and picks my trash up in my front yard. Well, the only thing you have to keep in mind is if you look at $19 a month, which is about the average. That's already at the top end of our assessment. You would have to go up on the assessment in order to cover that. And that, you know, that may be painful because, is that right, Tommy? Did I look at the numbers right? Right. So basically, I think what you have to consider is we would probably end up with the same rate that Swanee County does, who has probably twice the households that we do because that's just the cost of doing business. So, right? Yes. Am I looking at? Okay. So, but if you look at Jefferson County, they charge two twenty-five. 
uh, Madison's 225, Swanee's 225. And y'all are at 170. Yeah, 174. And when we went to 174, I thought we were going to have to run. <laughs> <laughs> but at least I'll come pick up Smile out. <laughs> well, let me ask, as the board, before you know, we send you on the wild goose chase and a lot of work involved and everything, is, is the board interested in a hunt pursuing this or do we want to leave it alone? I'd love to hear the figures. I mean, I mean, we, you know, and what we thought we could get in a, what bothers me, the household already don't bother me. It's all that other stuff that bothers me. Yeah. And you know what'll happen to it if he doesn't pick it up. And everybody knows what'll happen to it. Your tires and your, and your old cans and all your, all, all your heavy stuff and, and bulky stuff, uh, refrigerators and, uh, sofas and stuff like that end up out here like they do on old ditch and ditch mattresses and that kind of stuff. Yeah, we had to end up right out here side break. And uh, that's the hurdle you have to cross with this. I mean that's what I'm looking that's what I look at. Yeah. What would happen if if um this is just a scenario, okay. If um, if we have household garbage pickup door to door and then we had the three roll-off sites where they paid. When you take your furniture or your trees or your limbs or whatever it is you're gonna take, you pay by the weight or, or by some means. And how would that how would that work? It would it would work it back out or side of the exit. Because right now people are complaining about between the one forty and the one seventy four. I mean that's just that. That's what I'm hearing. The difficulty to transition into something like that. There's been too many years of it at 140, is what's happened. Yeah. Well, see, you've got some people that really don't generate a whole lot of stuff. Then you've got some people, um, I bet that they're there at least every other week hauling something off, limbs or, or something. So you've got those that would seldom use it, and then you've got the routine. But if they paid for it. I live right down the road from Bill and I pay a lot of attention to my swap. And some of them people come every day. Uh, <laughs> with more than not just household but with other stuff. With trailer loads of land and stuff. Wow. They might not all be coming out of the yard, but you got people buying little tracks of land all over Taylor County right now. Mm -hmm. Realty business has been real good. They sold tracks, people moving in here from everywhere. They'll move a nice a uh, camper trailer in there on a three acre, and they're going to bring that three acre that they clear right by our side. I mean, it's just that's the way it's happening. And I mean, I've, I've walked up there and talked to a lot of people with Michigan tags and Wisconsin tags and that kind of stuff at the dump site. And I told y'all before, one fellow told me, he said, You haul one limb that side, or it's six foot long to a site where he come from, it was, it was six dollars. To pull up there to unload one limb. I mean, you know, he said it. He had a trailer load of oak limbs and I helped him unload it because he was having a time with it. I, when I got mine unloaded, I went over and helped him. And he said, You wouldn't believe what it cost where I come from me, to get rid of this trailer load of stuff. You know? yeah. And and just the other morning, I come by the site, there was a fellow sitting at the gate with a truck with a washing machine in the back of it. And I knew the board number and I called, I texted him. I said, uh, why don't you carry that up for on 19 and sell it at the scrap place? And about an hour later, about 8, 30, 9 o'clock, he texted me back and said, they give me $9 for it. But he was fixing to, he was fixing to put it in our, in our can. You know, he was waiting for the site to open. And I just seen it and I texted him and, and he texted me back and said, he got $9 for it. Well, you should have sent him a bill for $3. Yeah. So I wonder how much does it cost us just for household garbage and how much does it cost us for all the other stuff, limbs, appliances and things like that? It's probably uh well I I'd have to look. Now the white goods we sell, but the um I'd have to go back and look and see what and and look at the breakdown between household garbage and um, the the last time we looked the compacted versus the not compacted it was about 50 50. 
but you really can't, you know, it's sometimes it's hard to know what, I mean, we burn the limbs, but then of course that's labor to, to burn and to, to run all that. So, um, I mean, it's hard to get a true it is. number. But then, of course, you have 600 very happy people because they would save at least 600 because they would save that $36 a month that they're paying, you know, an outside hauler. Tom, you said you, you, said you, you did you want to bid for, you don't know, about to do Swanee County? Well, we won the bid on it. And so we were supposed to sit down with the county manager. Well, they fired him. I got you. Okay. So now we were just, okay. How are they? Have, did, have they talked to any of the other counties talked and how they are handling this type crash and debris that commissioner? So the what we found and what we see is if you go to any county, those people that are throwing in the woods are going to throw in the woods. Mm -hmm. If the gate's locked or whatever, they're still going to do it. Um, you might come down some on the household trash because it's being picked up. But with um, the bid, and I'm just throwing everything out there, being honest, the bid with Swanee County, we were going to take care of all the limb debris for free. We did work, we were working out a deal for us to use some land to offset some of that cost for us. And then the, we would man the sites. And so I, I think each county is a little bit different, even though we're all small. But if I would make the suggestion, I would put the RFP out for uh, garbage trash pickup. And then I would add bulk items to it so you can get a price. But to be honest with you, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't want to take your money like that. I mean, you know I'd make profit off of that because of again that refrigerator is gonna tear up every five to seven to ten years. And so somebody's gonna pay for it for all that time and then not use it. And so but I would at least get a, a price so you can have something to judge off of but have it where you can break those parts out of the RFP, you know, where it doesn't have to be just this. So, Does anybody else if, uh, <laughs> be interested? I, I would say you know, it is a lot of work, I would say, for staff to do, but if we don't do some type of an RFP, it's just going to just be just what it is and we talk. Well, if, if the board is even considering going to this type of system we really need to know now because we'll need to know prior to budget um our budget workshop and especially adopting the budget because you don't know if the assessment needs to remain the same well we don't know until we know what it's right that, that's what i'm saying so the sooner the better really is yeah. if this is something that you're interested in right. i would like to see the numbers i mean Me I, think, I think once we put an RFP out there, and I think it's probably going to be you know, acknowledged that there is an RFP for. Oh, yeah, well, we'll advertise it. You need to put it on the agenda then. If yeah. we start to mm -hmm. or don't, don't do a vote now. Talk to the public. <laughs> I think you would start getting more feedback from even more of the public and mm -hmm. their feel on it. And we'll see the numbers and start to make a, a decision on what's best for them. But, Conrad, the board can instruct me to start preparing. Sure. The documents and then bring back to the, you know, if y'all give me a few weeks, I mean, and then I can bring it back to the board yeah, um, right. Friday. <laughs> I was going to give up sleeping anyway. It's just, it seems to be a waste of time. So <laughs> um, I can bring it back to the board if, if you'd like to see that. Well, I'll tell you what, when I voted to raise that assessment, I got hammered. Right. And and you would and need it was to only three dollars a loaf of bread a month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we might we, we might soon forget. But now the six hundred you talking about, I don't know about then, but that them that I got, they didn't want to pay three dollars a month more to clean it up. Yes, sir. I don't mind taking a look at the, the information. Yeah. As, as, I mean, but. You know, I, I tend to agree with Commissioner Dents. Um, any variance versus what we're, we're experiencing now, as far as an increase, I don't believe it's going to be well received. I don't have any idea of what your cost would be. I don't want to do a request, but if it's if it's more efficient and something that is more beneficial to our residents, 
And certainly that's understandable. But I, I tend to think, you know, you're going to pay for that convenience of pickup. And the folks that I represent feel very certain they're paying enough today. But remember, our costs are only going to increase. And that's, that's why I, I don't mind looking at it. But right. I will tell you, if it's a large increase, I'm out. But you may have to, you may have to increase the assessment anyway. We may have an increase because of cost of doing business, Correct. and that would be what it'd be, and that, that goes with the cost of living and all those other, um, let's say, <laughs> variables. Um, but I haven't forgotten. I believe what Mr. Demps is referencing as yes, far as I'm folks not, not being real pleased. And, uh, so I respectfully look at the numbers and information and thank you for coming out and sharing all that information. I do know that Pop Sanitation does a great service for this county. I mean, saw the truck in the parade um, <laughs> down the state at you. And so so our, our county does benefit by y'all's business. Well, let me ask you this. I was told Dixie County was considering that. They have an issue at Dixie County doing, they're in the same situation as what I've heard from a resident down there. They're in the same situation now that we were in a year ago when we were going in the hole at 140. And we have pays for that garbage. Yeah. We, we solved that problem for a little while, but it's, it's going to cost more soon. That 174 won't cover for a thing you know here. Uh, that, that we just need to go in eyes wide open and understand that there may be, unfortunately, there may be an increase just from the cost of doing business, just depending on how how things go, how things work out. But let me ask you, um, how often do you increase your your fees? We do it one time in two years, and we able to do that. But we're at a place now that. When fuel jumped up to $6 and trucks jumped up um, to where they're at, the same, I bought a bigger truck, cost me $140,000. That same truck's $200,000 a day. So, but when you look at um, spreading it across, um, if it was a, a, a RFP and done, there's limitations in there. What is it? The, it's a, a set number is all you can go up each, each time. What would you say that your percentage of your increase was when you went up? Do you know? No, no. What, like 8 or 9 percent? It was probably close to 8 or 9 percent on that first time. But when we started this business, we were doing it for next, I mean, we were, we took a model that was in Bay County and brought it to Madison County and it was a little different, so we tweaked it. And so now, all of our, even with the increase, I think we lost two customers, but we've gained much more than that. Yeah. So one, what we have to do is, you have to make a lot of, and I know you know this, but she has to make a lot of projections, like even this year, what's gonna be happening this year. Well, we have a five year, five year budget, um, that we but, can. but still on over a period of time, when we look at what we know will be increases, and you know, I don't know where I am with this because I don't know how much it's going to cost. You know, we all have to see see what that is first, and then make a decision. But I think that it's incumbent upon us to, you know, always be looking, see if there's something better, see if there's something more cost effective, um, and just see where we are. We certainly don't want to be where we've been, Commissioner Moody, for all of these years and do nothing. That's exactly right. We live. We. We worked in the, in the dark on it too long at that 140 is what we did. Back years ago when they started charging for trailer loads of stuff coming down there, I, I wasn't a part of it at that time. But if they'd have kept that up, we would have never, we would have never had a problem. But, you know, but that's, that's quarter under the bridge. So we got to look forward and, and look ahead and make this thing work. My hat's off to you if you can do it. For the price you do it with the way things are, you know. I mean, it's that's it's. Right. Do you have a problem getting help? 
No, sir. <laughs> you, must be, you must be paying them mighty good. We, we pay decent, but they're a family to us. Um, and it's been, it's been challenging watching other businesses. Luckily for us, we have been okay. Right. Um, our bottom end, we've changed that out just because the people don't want to work a whole lot. But I can find bottom end all day long. But we run cameras on the trucks. We run GPS on the trucks. And, and somebody throws a four mattresses out there by their dump can. Uh, Y'all pick them up, or do you charge that sort of three dollars comes in? So we'll we'll reach out to them, and if it's it depends on the situation. I'd hate to say, hey, this is how we're going to do it, but if it's that little old lady that doesn't have anybody else, oh, I understand that we come in the house and we've done it. Right. But we've also those people will pick up the phone and say, hey, that's you're 26 miles away. That's 25 dollars. We'll come get it. And so we we have added on all stuff like that, but most of it we got a, a trailer in the truck, and all they do is go around and do bulk pickup right now. Yeah, right. Uh, for an extra expense. And you metal out and you sell them. I'm sure you scrap them out. Yes, yeah. and it's concrete. We got a place where we can lay it down. Hopefully one day we'll have a uh, rock crusher, and then we can recycle the concrete. Yeah. So we're storing up for that. Um, so and the good thing about um, curbside pickup on going up with it. You're not offering the same go to the site. Mm -hmm. You know, you are going, hey, wait a minute, they're going to come to your house to pick it up. So it is a little bit different on going up. And again, um, I, I don't like seeing my taxes go up, you know, in where I'm at. But with Dixie County, they basically told the, the front load of the dumpster business down there, we're stopping as of this day. So we were getting calls and calls and calls. And the superintendent of the trash side of it, we talked to him every week. And so we've been running down there trying to help them out. Um, we've helped out the city of Live Oak. We run a truck for theirs when they tore up. City of Monticello, we've helped out. We offered to help Waste Pro down here when their trucks were tearing up. Um, the, the way I look at it is, is that's the only way you can be a good neighbor. You know, um, you got to be able to help the other person out. I wish we would get all the complaints out of out of here from the, the trash business. You know, we got Mr. Tootin had a uh inspection and he couldn't pass inspection because his dumpster looked so bad we did sneak in here in the middle of the night we dumped it for him so he could pass inspection um but anyway uh, that's that's a, a story in itself <laughs> that's for another day does all the household garbage have to be bagged up no sir it can be you rather it can be, be in the can and you just dump it yes do y'all furnish the cans yes sir. and so we we do, like now, we do a one-time delivery fee so we can get the GPS run out, all that kind of stuff. And whoever named the roads and steam hatches, man, they drive me crazy. There's about <laughs> 75 first degrees here, you know. So anyway, we do do that now. Um, but we supply again, and, and we, I was asked with the city of Monticello, how many have you ever lost? We've lost two. One to fire, and one got stolen. And what we do, we'll replace it for free if we get a police report. You would think people would go steal, 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 that doesn't happen. Um, so yeah. no, you got your name on the can. Yes, and our number. That way they call us, and then we, and let's say that uh, we got to bid on this, um, then that way we would, we would send a monthly report saying, hey, this is the complaints we've got this month. This is how we have Because uh, she's way overworked right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and you just start in live up, you say? Um, no, we're, they fired their county manager. They got an intern, um, and he might stay or might, but they want to hold off until they get something in place. I would love to see how that goes over there before we make a, you know, go too far with it. But it's like one of y'all's residents at, told me the other day, he said, how come Yaskin County can do it, and how come Wakulla County can do it? And I almost said, call your county commissioner. And I said, well, I don't know, maybe it'll come one day. So. You pay taxes and we'll put the county, you can understand why. Yes. That's the that's, that's reason. Hey, right. you've done a good job. Thanks, sir. And I wish you much success. Yes. Thank you for coming. Yes, thank you. All right, the board discussed roadside litter. <laughs> well, we're on a trashy subject. Um, I asked uh, for this to be on our workshop agenda, and 
You know, first I, I'd just say I, I I do recognize that a you know a great effort goes into um, keeping all that picked up. So I appreciate our work squads and our staff that are working uh, diligently. But you know the issue seems to be that certain high traffic areas and some of those with proximity to the roll off sites um, have a, a a need that perhaps more frequency uh, would help in, enhance the appearance <laughs> around those sites and help help our community um, look a whole lot better. So I, I just wanted to try to bring this before the board and see if you know we could have a discussion about looking at certain areas, certain roads, and, and taking up a measure. Of course, it would be an extra cost. But my, my thought was, if we looked at the, the month of March and April, which would be just before our our mowing cycle and our contracting cycle would, would come into place, because uh, as I think everybody's aware, um, there's quite a, a, a build up while those folks are not in season per se. And I know I heard about that last year. So, you know, my, my thought was to come before the board, bring this before the board to see if we can look at at those type areas and, and pay by the mile and understanding and agreeing on what those areas would be. But some of some some of those that I'm familiar with and I'm not singling anybody out, but around Carlton or around the State Hatchie roll off site or Blue Springs and I'm sure Harrison Blue or Bernard Johnson or Shady Grove that there is it's just life and we see those kind of accumulations there. So I just didn't know what the board may may have <coughs> wished to do, but I, I would like to see what that cost would be for for those target type areas. You know, say for 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 instance, you know, Highway 27 and County Road 30 goes all the way through to Carlton, and you see that build up through there, and it's it's not uh, the fault of those crews that are picking it up. It's just a lot of folks coming down through there, and those volumes tend to accumulate. So. This would be a, an additional effort to to try to um, have our county presented in a more uh, clean or beautified fashion. Commissioner Newman, um, I, I think this is exactly one of those things that we need to discuss uh, on this meeting, meeting we're going to have that I requested last week where we look at our priorities before the budget process begins. I'm all with you on this. And um, that would be a, a good one to discuss at that time too. Yes, ma'am. I just, I mean, I, I didn't know if anybody else had those kind of perspectives, but I, I don't want it to come across as, you know, just playing favorites or not being grateful for the efforts that are going into it. But is there a way that, you know, this board can, can assist? You know, if when when they go to mow, for instance, the Bucket Road yeah. down to Carlton or 30 going out to, to, to uh, 19, they go along with a four wheeler and they pick up all the track on the road and they mow the road. Two days later, the same stuff is back on the road. I mean, I come and go on the Bucket Road and 30 basically almost every day. And uh, that's, it seems like it takes about a week and it looked just like it did when they picked up when it, before it had the mow and they only mowed you know so many times a year yes and uh mike strickland with the sheriff's department they, and that, and took, they got the crew that they that helps us they they pick up a world of stuff around every dump site they they, they spend a lot of time and, and 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 do a good job of it i can call uh Mike Strickland and say there's a bag of garbage sitting on the side of 30 between Papa's store at Hill Station and, and Dunn. He'll go by the next morning, pick that bag up, open it up, and if it's got somebody's name in it, he'll he'll bag it, rebag it, and he'll tell the sheriff. So and so uh, left his bag of garbage and have place to dump down there. And the sheriff takes care of it. He warned them and he said, if it ever comes out again, you know, we're going to, you're going to have, you know, it's going to be trouble. And, and, and he's done that several times. Right. And, and it's helping. Uh, but 
just like the corn bag, just before hunting season, there's corn bags going everywhere you go until they come to be corn bags to eat the corn bags. They dump the corn out in the woods and then they throw the bag over in the back of the truck and they get 50 miles an hour, it blows out. Mm -hmm. 98 looks like a corn bag factory. Uh, <laughs> way before most season. <laughs> you know, and, uh, that's, just, that's just the way it is. Yeah. Well, I, I've heard from residents, I mean, I've I do know the sheriff staff, and I've talked with the sheriff, and I believe I, I'm sure he'd be in support of the he's he's 100% And talking. that's not criticism on their work. I don't mean that be misunderstood, but if I think it would be great, and I believe they'd be appreciative for any kind of extra effort. We can. In other words, the budget needs a little another. Well, I, I'm not of, of another crew to help. Or? Well, I, I'm not sure exactly. You know how how far that goes. I mean, I I think if we can look at you know these areas and and agree on what they are, because I'm I don't believe that it's affordable to just do a, a total rotation. I mean, I think that's pretty costly. It's so, fifteen thousand five hundred dollars. So if we or, if we just said two additional rotations, that's that's thirty one thousand dollars. So that's that's further really than what I'm proposing. And I that's mean, not the county roads. That's <laughs> just the roads that that the contractor would normally pick up trash on. Right. So yeah. I mean that that's why I wanted to try to specify these areas of high intensity and high volumes, um, so that um, it wouldn't be such a, a high cost. It, it would be an effort to try to help out and, and minimize some of that. And hopefully, it wouldn't be every other day that you, you couldn't tell that it, you know, has been picked up the day before, or two days, or whenever that was. But I, I mean, I don't think at this point that it's it's something that's that's you know affordable or practical to go forward with a full rotation of, of trash pickup. So that's why I'm saying these these targeted areas that. You know, we see high volumes of traffic, but that we also want to, to look more presentable than we do. So we can certainly talk about the budget if that's a workshop meeting topic as far as additional costs. But, but this venture was something that's more short term before our mowing cycle starts so that we can look at, at some of these problem areas and give some help to the sheriff's office and those work crews. In, in the next month or two. It needs to be about halfway between the rotation of the mowing. Well, I mean, my, my thought is, you know, if we can come to an agreement of the cost, you know, make the consideration for the March and April um, rotation with those agreed on areas. Uh, and, and at least, you know, we're, we're taking, <clears throat> well, it's not the, the largest effort we could take, but it is a, a um, a precise effort to, to try to um, maximize the expense, but not spend the maximum amount. <laughs> so that's why I'm saying, you know, there's certain, uh, what I would feel like is a certain number of, of miles within those proximities of the row off sites that, that I think everybody can agree on has a, a higher amount of trash littered on the roadside. And so I, I just feel like that consideration, uh, if we can uh, have staff look at those locations and, and agree on what the cost would be, I think it's by the acre at this time, I was thinking more of about a mile. Was that way we could say you know, there's, there's this many miles within this proximity of this road off site. Well, either, either way, yes, we could, we could provide those numbers. Again, I, I hate to be the voice of doom and gloom, but I would, you know, you just have to consider that the funds that we would use to pay for this type of expenditure would come out of secondary road paving funds, your district funds, and because of because of the rising cost of doing business and the, the dollar an hour, the minimum wage increase, we are now using secondary road paving to balance road bridge and you're no longer you no longer have new revenue in those funds if you'll recall so unfortunately it may be using non-recurring revenue to 
pay for an expenditure. So if you have if you have the funds available this year, I don't know that you'll have the funds available next year. So it's just something to consider. Um, now, on a more positive note, if you'll recall several years ago, um, the board agreed to utilize their district road paving funds to help pay for an additional squad. And at that time, we calculated that it would be 50% and it would come from each district. We have now, so this last year, um, at the end of the year, we recalculated that amount to be closer to 25%. So there are some funds that are, you know, that were put back into the into your district funds, and that's part of the reason. And and you'll see that number, but that only comes out to $3,250 for each <clears throat> district. And you know, so just something to consider. But I'm I'm concerned that next budget year, we're going to have a more difficult time balancing the budget because of the minimum wage impact and, um, you know, salary increases. So just consider, I mean, this may not be something that you can do every year. So um, because of our, our fund, our funding. Yeah, a couple of things too. Um, I know some communities have an adopt the road program. And uh, they have groups of volunteers that take care of these roads, and it works well. I know in Madison County, um, you know, they're very successful with, with that, cleaning up the streets, roads. Um, that's the other thing. <laughs> well, you're, your point, I mean, I agree. I know there's a, a couple of events down at the Pinhatchee, and I believe you guys provide the containers for the events. <laughs> What folks do, they do a, cl a pickup, cleanup, and and so it's really to motivate folks to come out and take part, and and so it's a great service that that uh, Tommy and, and Pops is. is I know the other thing thing. was, and I know we've talked about this a jillion times, <laughs> <laughs> and that's you know people that are sentenced to community service. I still don't. I mean. I wish there was some way we could work that. I know, Moody, you brought that up many times, the same as I have. And we just can't seem to get there from here. But other, 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 Lamb County doesn't. And why they can't do work such as this. Yeah, and I know they said, well, you have to have an officer there on the weekend or whenever it is to, to do that. But I mean, have we ever really calculated the cost of that? officer and then what we would gain in terms of hiring another crew or whatever I thought there's got to be a lot of offenders that could do that i thought it was the liability that's the work on requirement that was the consideration from our from our carrier well then how do they do it in Lamb county then let's talk to them find out i mean I'm not opposed if that were to a, a, a multi-front uh, solution. <laughs> Whether that's, and I don't disagree. I, I don't think every year, you know, this is the end-all and fix-all. I mean, I think it's a consideration for now because I, I do think that it would would help. And um, so again, I, I don't want that to come off the wrong way as an expected recurring cost. I, I would say um, I would. would like to get information from staff to understand sure. what those costs would be and, and if they're a, a reasonable cost, um, I'm, I'm willing to understand that and bring that back before the board. So bring back some numbers back to the board during our strategic planning sessions. Yeah, that'd be a good time to discuss. Um, all right, moving along. The board discussed the Avalorium tax exemption ordinance. I believe this was to discuss the possibility of amending the ordinance so that if businesses are not current on their paying their taxes 
that the board um, could consider um, revoking their their ad valorem tax exemption. Yeah. Well, for were, were there any other changes that you wanted to consider, or was that was that the main one? That was the one that that we discussed. I'm, I'm not mistaken. I may have been already prepared that. Uh, I prepared something on that. Oh, it was. No, it was, that was specific. That was a specific <laughs> one that the board had given uh, an exemption to a company, and that they took care of it. Now, what about if businesses are on a payment plan? Do, do y'all have any particular feelings about that? Because uh, pays every quarter. Well, they may be. They may be in arrears, but they're making payments to get caught up. Those are normally, I think, um, well, normally the, the tax collector lets me know if someone is making payments, but they are in arrears. They haven't paid, but they are paying. They're paying current, but they're paying payments on what they are behind on. You know, so, so are they not then considered delinquent? They're delinquent, they're just making payments on it. So, so was your language had a provision or something? Well, you can put in and say, like, just hypothetically, that say if they're um, two years behind or one year behind or whatever, that uh, the board, in its ultimate discretion, can um, uh, cancel uh, their, their exemption. But, but in this consideration where a organization already has a tax abatement, it, wouldn't it be the best demonstration to not have that qualification, if you will, to be delinquent or behind your tax? I mean, so wouldn't it be fair? You've already, if, if an organization's already received a tax exemption, I mean, it isn't that, when is enough enough? Well, I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, so that's what, that's what I'm with you. I'm mean, with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm just, I mean, I think at some point. Are we going to cut you off? Well, I mean, I'm not trying to be unreasonable or, or lose our, our businesses. That's what you need to be careful but of. But I think, I think the abatement is considerable in itself. So, I, I mean, I feel like it's reasonable to say, to a, a, a new business or someone that's located here, this is the expectation. And in that communicated expectation, we have this clause that says that your exemption may be revoked if you fall delinquent on your on what taxes you are going to pay. Well, you have to now. You have to remember too that these annual reports are given in January. Right. So they may just not have paid their taxes yet because they have until March or April. March. March. Right. So, and I don't know if they're going to pay their taxes or not. So that's, I mean, we don't always know. So if we've had language in this instance that, that constituted a, a check and balance of the taxes being paid by the ultimate deadline, then, then this board would know. Or the current, whomever the current board would know that it was paid. Well, I think you just have to remember that, so I can give, we can give a report in January. Right. They may not have paid their taxes yet, but they yeah. have until March or April. But then by the next January, when it rolls around, if they are not current then, then they would be considered delinquent. And, and I, this is all semantics. I just want to point that out. That when we give the report, we don't know if they there's that window of time as far as when they can make their payments. So um, it could be the next January before we know if that they're still in play. Help me with that now. It's, it's actually late in March, right? March is when they're late if they don't pay it by March. March 31st. Okay, so then after March that they're, they're, they haven't paid it, they're late. That's why I'm saying though, it would be the next January before I would report that as being delinquent. Why? Because I don't know in the current year if they're going to pay their taxes or not. 
But they didn't pay it when they were supposed to. Well, no, that, that would be. Tell me, I'm trying to understand. <laughs> All I'm saying is that when I make the report in January, that is for, that would be the previous year's taxes, not the current year taxes. You see what I'm saying? So they would have not paid the year before. Well, you know, I have a lot of concerns about this. And it, and it used to be like this, you know, you've got people, okay, am I going to pay my electricity bill or am I going to pay my doctor bill? They're going to pay their electricity bill. I guarantee you they're going to pay something that's going to be cut off. But if it's something that's not going to be cut off, they're not going to pay it. But I guess I have a problem with it at the board's discretion. And I guess it comes before us and, well, we have to make the decision if we're going to do something or not. Well, maybe you want to do something and you don't. Then you look, like you look bad. When he says, oh, well, let them have a few more months. He said, no, they were late. Let's go. You see what I'm saying? Well, I know the wording in the ordinance, um, as it applies to the, as it pertains to the application, basically, I'll paraphrase. If you're not current on your taxes, don't even submit an application. Am I, is that correct, Conrad? So it's more clear in the application process. Don't even give us your application if you're not current on your taxes. Where it becomes, could become more of a gray area is during that monthly reporting time. Um, and, and so, it, and it's not something that, I mean, it comes up every year, but then it would appear that we're not, we weren't entirely sure if we had that discretion or not. Well, we don't really have very many exemptions anyway. Correct. Yeah. Okay. There's not many of them. Right. Then number two, uh, they don't have the, they didn't comply with the number of folks that they were supposed to hire. No, you can file, you can pass an ordinance to take them out as, as far as the exemption goes. Or if they don't pay the salaries that they that they were going to do, you can uh, pass an ordinance to, um, you know, to disqualify the, uh, the exemption. So then, and I think, yeah, understand about um, Pam, I'm doing this from memory because I, I look at my tax bills, you know, I get them all at once and then I, I pay one at a time because I just can't write the check for all of them all at once. That's <laughs> my religion. You know, and you, know, you know how you do that. So, but what happens is, is that if you don't pay your taxes by um, the end of March, okay, then by the end of June, then it's delinquent in that, you know, your name gets in the paper or the list, a list, you know, and it will go on the, for sale and, 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 and you know, you say, oh my gosh, you've got to pay it and I don't, you don't want your name in the, in the paper, that sort of thing. The other thing is that we live in an economy that fluctuates. Have you checked your 401k or you checked your SIP or your IRA lately? You know, and we're sort of in a, a bear market now, I think. Uh, I don't know whether the pundits have said that, but what I'm saying is that it's difficult in business right now to make sure that you pay everything because it's like the fuel going up. You know, it's well, it's come down a little bit, price lower. But so, uh, my point being is that we don't have a whole lot of these exemptions. You know, um, how many we got? Uh, three. Three, three exempt. We got three exempt, three tax exemptions uh, right now. So, in preparing an ordinance. Like you were talking about, um, you got to. I, I want to keep it as simple as possible, you know, where the average person can understand it, um, and put enough discretion in the board to be able to make a decision 
whether you're going to pass that ordinance or not, meaning that ordinance to obviate the ordinance that gives them the exemption. Because I can foresee, and having been your county attorney for a little while, <coughs> I can foresee so, um, <laughs> quarter to eight. Anyway, um, I can foresee them coming in and saying, look, you know, I paid taxes for all these years. You know, I'm having a little bit of a bad year. This, um, you know, I'll catch it up. Don't, don't cut me on that. And I can foresee y'all saying, yeah, okay. You know, don't come back next year, but do it. I'm just, I'm just saying about because you're, you know, as a, as a county commissioner, um, you're, you know, you're all supposed to have some empathy too. You know, here I am arguing for somebody that I don't even represent, but I'm trying to try to, try to tell you what the the, you know, the the pitfalls could be, could be. Um, so just think about that, and of course I'll do an ordinance. Ever how y'all want it, but I've got to try and word it <laughs> such that it not only um, is simple enough to be understandable, but also hopefully if we got sued, it would pass muster. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Nimbus. Yeah. You know, I understand what you said, Mr. Bishop, and if somebody here had. 500 people working and they didn't pay a million dollars of taxes for one year or I mean for a month. I can understand having a feeling that if you got 500 people working or shut it down, not let them go, but let them put them on a payment plan that they will pay it out. Is that what you were saying? You wouldn't say it? Not to pay it off. Sort of. Well, yeah. In my business, you know, you come in and you hire me and you pay. A certain amount down, yeah. you know, and <laughs> I finished the case, and you have, you know, and you used up that down payment, and you owe me that much. I'm going to finish the case, okay. you know. I'm not going to throw them out and say, you know, I, I quit. I could, but I don't, everybody that knows me knows I'm not going to do that. Um, so, and. And I tell people that, well, that's my position. Okay. You know, but, and I'm not a commissioner. I'm just saying, yeah. I'm just trying to foresee what y'all are going to have uh, at some point. This, yeah, and yeah. this, this economy we in is, you know, can't be up and down. Not only that, uh, I, I just feel that we've got a lot of companies in this county is doing a great job. They don't even come to us for incentives or anything like that. My hat's off to those people. We have some that come to the county, don't really need your money, but because we've got this out here, they take advantage of it. Well, they, what they've got is people that owe them money too, is the reason they can't pay the taxes on time. I'm sure just paying time, on, they're owed money. From other people, they're waiting on their money to come in to be able to pay it. I'm sure. Well, money paid spirals and helps, but money not paid spirals downward. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, are we okay for Mr. Bishop to draw this up as, I think you're, you know, maybe you're. I'm going to try and put it in such a job. But I'll have some discretion. Have the discretion of the board. I mean, I, I don't I wouldn't have a problem looking at a business if they was continuously Yeah. yeah whether you look at them and say I wouldn't have a problem looking at a business and telling them that Yeah, go ahead and I'm okay to cut them off. Yeah. But I've got one other question of I get to ask Wanda a question. She's always asking me one if y'all go ahead. <laughs> as far as you know three exemptions that the board has granted by ordinance mm -hmm. this day February the 28th 2023 nobody's behind right correct however no I don't want any howevers well you know that's how I have to answer all your questions it would be either a however or but 
So re recall, remember that Perry Prospects is still an active exemption. Well, their exemption hasn't started yet. So their exemption's on the books, but their exemption does not actually start until they enter the construction phase, I think. So I don't even give a report on them. They're not receiving an exemption. They won't until construction begins. That was a long time ago. That it, it was. I mean, years. It was, but. I remember, because I was sitting over there when they did it. The clock doesn't start until yeah. the project's complete, and then it's 10 years from then. The only reason I asked that question is that what has been done by the board has essentially worked for the first the entity that got the exemption mm -hmm. and the whole point of the thing was was to get jobs i can remember when we just and ever i remember miss Spiegel, every county commission meeting here's a guy I'm interested in jobs, 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 right? In tournaments. <laughs> in tournaments. <laughs> we were talking about that at my house the other night. You know, because um, my grandson's involved in wrestling tournaments. You know, and he's going to state. Maybe it's the state in this next week. 220 pounds. It's really cool. Wow. He's a tough nut. But some of the, you know, to get that tournament in your place, like it was in um, Wheeler Hitchka, the regional was in Wheeler Hitchka um, this last week. So the, um, the state tournament is in Kissimmee, of course. Uh, Orlando, um, but they compete to get the district tournament. They compete to get the uh, regional tournament, and so forth and so on. And the regional tournament, and we would hitch it. Believe me, it was ran really well. It was run really, really well. And I'm sure they made money for their their school. You know? And the word gets out, like y'all were talking about. Y'all can just get the tournament here and. and Right. and have it run really good if the word will get out. So, so with this, I'm just wondering, I mean, you know, Comrade, you made some really great points, and thank you for that. Um, we've only got three. We've only had one incident so far, and they uh, fixed everything. I wonder if we really need to do anything right now. That would be my suggestion, because, and I, and of course, I'm a member of the chamber, but I've never been to a meeting. Okay, okay. I just give them the money. It's sort of like when I was in one of those, um, one of those uh, clubs. You know, this one club that I was a member of, they kicked me out because I didn't go. The other club that I was in, I, I didn't go. I kept getting my money, so they had to kick me out. You know, so well, I don't think I want to not do anything. I mean, I think as a, from a, a board perspective, I, mean, I want to have some accountability to these businesses. Well, see, you do have that. The, the ordinance does provide that if they don't hire, mm -hmm. we can, you know, y'all can pass an ordinance to um, take the exemption away. It's, it's right there in black and white. I thought we already had that in place, so they didn't. We've already got that part in it. It's in there. That's what, right, I'm right saying. Right. That's what I'm saying. But we could put the part about if they didn't pay their taxes by the end of March, you know, we could put that in there without any issue. I mean, well, we have to pass an ordinance to, you know, to amend the ordinance. Right. We'd have to pass an ordinance to do that. You know. But that doesn't mean you have to. I mean, that gives you the ability. Uh, you don't have the ability to do anything at all if they don't pay their taxes. I mean, it's for that. I mean, I feel like we owe it to our taxpayers in our state to at least have the option. Have the option. Yeah. Because yeah. so some of them go over and beyond and make sure they can pay the taxes no matter what. I mean, yeah. the folks that are working for that company, if they go behind on their taxes, what happens? 
It goes on the tax deed. If they don't pay it, they get sold on the courthouse steps. Well, that's the reason you have a workshop. You'll tell me to go ahead and prepare it. Then and you're going to have it. Then you're going to have a public hearing on it. Sure. And you might have people that are further against it or whatever. And hopefully, that consideration will never have to be made. But at least it's in the, the guidance. It will give us an option too. They come up here and explain the reason. You know, they couldn't pay them. We could put them on a payment plan or something and get something out of them. Start working forward, they'd be doing something. You know, maybe. The other, the, as y'all know, I'm a firm believer in finding out what other folks who have this are doing with regard to, I'll bet you we can find an ordinance where they say what we're talking about. Okay. Yeah. I'll, you know, I'll do it. That means y'all are going to pass it. So, we bring the board to discuss the economic incentives program ordinance. We did discuss this previously, and I must admit, I was not clear if the board wished to instruct the county attorney to prepare an ordinance to repeal this, this the original ordinance, or if you wanted further discussion. The, the, uh, Conrad, the original ordinance was adopted, it was 2003-14, and then in 2006, it was amended. But I can't find that we have, in, in, as long as, as far back as I can recall, I cannot find that we have actually utilized this program. So the choices are to either, um, is to either amend the monetary amounts by resolution um, since they have not been amended in so long or to repeal the ordinance. And I thought that was the um, that was the direction the board was headed. I just while we're talking about these ordinances, I wanted to bring it back up. I'll be honest, uh, I haven't read that ordinance in a long time. It's it was passed a long time ago. So this is a, this is a separate economic incentive program that was adopted by the board prior to the economic development ad valorem tax exemption program. So, and I really can't find history, but it looks like in 2003, the board adopted this ordinance in 2006. It was amended, but then in 2009, a completely different program was developed. And I really can't find or recall since this ordinance was adopted that we have utilized this economic incentive program. But at the very least, the Taylor County adjusted wages are, are I mean, the numbers are so skewed at this point that um, it's something to consider. <laughs> Have more tax exemption basically supersede this? No, we still have. Well, I'm saying it's, a, it's really addressing the same <coughs> issue in, yes. a, in a greater capacity. Yes. So it would then mean this incentive program isn't necessary? I wouldn't think so. I mean, um, and what it requires is monetary payments to the recipient instead of tax exemptions. Mm -hmm. And um, the maximum employment incentive per applicant shall be $50,000. Well, this is, we would need to repeal this? Unless you want both programs. Um, when can we do that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> make a motion now. This is a workshop. We can't. I mean, no, I don't think we need one. There's a no brainer there. We're gonna put this our next. Meeting. Well, Conrad, can you prepare an ordinance to repeal this ordinance and bring it back to? Yes, send me the ordinance. Yes, sir. Send me the ordinance. Okay. I'll look at it. Okay. Uh, all right. The board to discuss dates for strategic planning workshops. Uh, I think our last meeting we did talk about strategic planning and we uh, 
think we had some had mentioned some separate meetings just for some strategic planning going in before budget season. And we mentioned maybe the possibility of having these at a workshop during the holding these at, at one of our regular workshops. You know, there's a lot of our workshops you know, maybe only have two or three items that we may have to cover. So um is I mean, we're wanting to hold that over the course of I mean we have one workshop a month, so want to hold multiple of these. Do, do, do one of the meetings that, how often do we want to do this? Well, let's just see, you know, let's have one. And if we, we all know the things that we want to ask for, just like Commissioner Newman was talking tonight, and I've got some things I want to discuss. I don't see why we couldn't do it in one meeting, huh? It depends on, um, it just depends. I mean, we may be able to, I would just say the sooner I receive the topic, the better, because then I can do whatever research I need to. I'll have plenty of time. Now, when do you actually start? You know, when do y'all start really talking about budget real soon, right? Oh, I've already. Yeah, yeah I've so already started. When do you do this? When do you go ahead and do this? Why don't we do that at our March workshop? Why don't we let that be here? I mean, we can we can have the first meeting then, and and then okay. That would be the twenty eighth. That's what we have. Mm -hmm. But if y'all will if y'all will go ahead and submit your topics to me, that would be helpful because then I have some time to to get numbers together or study impacts or do whatever research I need to do. Alright, so we're going to discuss master project list. <coughs> um, so we have updated <coughs> the project list to include the sidewalk projects, um, just to make sure that we keep you informed on that. Um, the Hunters Park Rehab, we did submit a letter to Land and Water Conservation Fund asking for an extension to that grant. Unfortunately, um, we have we have already have gone through two different points of contact. So I talked to Melody today. We're just going to submit our request to someone higher up so we can make sure that this is on the radar and it doesn't get lost on somebody's desk. Um, the the graphic survey is complete and the next step is in the engineer working on the design phase. Um, we did reach out to our developed consortium and ask what would be what we need to do as far as an extension on that grant. They actually advised that we wait until we're well into construction before we ask for an extension because then we have a better idea of if we need monetary um, if we need additional funding, we need additional time. They don't want us to ask now, but we were assured that it was it was not a difficult process, which made me feel better. Yeah, that, that makes me feel better too. And plus, you know, when two or three years ago when we first started this, you know good and well about that. We, what we were talking about is not going to cover this. That's that's a concern. So that actually made sense. So we, we don't want to wait till the last minute. We just want to make sure we have a good idea of what we're asking Sounds for. Good. Now, on the canal dredging, we actually um, found out today that Wood is still waiting for the permitting. So they are going to ask for a contract extension as well, um, which should not be an issue. Um, we just have to coordinate it with Treasury to ask for an extension on that side. Um, they're waiting for a contract. What it is? They they are waiting on permitting, so they are asking. So they have not. I know. It's a common thing, and I understand. <clears throat> so they have not completed with with everything required. So is it fair to say that DEP is who they're? Awaiting the permit. They did not name the culprit. They say how long <laughs> they might have been waiting. I mean, because look, this is a recurring theme, and, and I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's. There's not a lot 
uh, obviously that we can move along in the process, but um, I, I, don't, I don't think this is a trend that, that's um, to be replicated, let's say. I think this would be an excellent topic for um, when we speak to our legislators in March and remind them mm -hmm. that we're still having an issue with um, it's not just it's not just that agency. I will say it's our it's our great agencies. It seems like every time we turn around, we have a new contact, and it's it's difficult for us to keep up with it. Um, so I will keep you posted on all that. Um, Southside Park um, is almost complete. What um, we are considering, if unless there's any objections from the board, we would like to actually convert the racquetball court to a pickleball court. Um, we feel like there's plenty of space to put two pickleball courts. It's kind of a rage. Pickleball. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, it's a, it's a growing it is opportunity. Very, very popular. And um, so it's like, it's kind of like Tennis, but not as uh, intensive. On our scale, I was cornered up today about pickleball courts. So, yeah. what yeah. we would like to do is use our utilize our public works department to to remove the um, the wall, the barrier. the barrier in the racquetball court. We cannot imagine that anyone is playing racquetball there. What you're talking about? Other things are happening there, but it's not racquetball. Is that the center wall or the whole perimeter? The whole, I think it would be the whole perimeter. So you'll have an open court. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, now from what I understand, and but we feel like once we take that down, that we can actually, we'll have to look at the budget to see if, if what, what it would take to put up permanent nets and, and striping and all that, but well, you know, that's a process we can work through. I, I couldn't imagine that anyone would have any objections to that. And it would remove an eyesore from that part. And yeah. Yes, there's, yes. I think that's a good project to yeah. do with this part, but I think we also need to, in the long term, we need to look at putting a record of uh, pickleball court at our complex. Yeah. Pickleball or pickleball? Pickleball. Pickleball. P I C K L E. Well, now we will have um, we will have upcoming bird out print opportunities. We have not heard, we have not received word on the uh, the last application, but that cycle will come back around and I think the print applications are due in August. So we need to start talking about at some point that bird out grant applications. That may be something that we could apply for a bird out grant to add pickleball. Uh, as you know, I mean, there is a group with great interest yeah. um, in, in this sport, and there's there's quite a commitment of folks that are, I wouldn't say they're, they're in tournaments, but they have a weekly session that they travel to, so <clears throat> the potential is, is uh, very high in respect to um, the use and, and the participation in that, so I would certainly support Southside and, and the complex, but there's also been interest in other potential um, <coughs> venues, locations, or venues. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, in, in the county. Well, we think um, there's room for two courts at Southside, which will be outgrown almost immediately. Indeed. So I believe I saw is a, is the standard size eight or sixteen courts? Pickleball. Uh, I believe. I believe you can, in a, in a full court basketball scene, I believe you can put three pickleball courts. Right. There's a lot of them, I believe, on our tennis courts. I mean, yes. They, I mean, he was very light. Yeah, but there are pickleball. Right. It's, it's right for pickleball. Well, that was my mis that was my understanding, but I think they, this group has already outgrown the sports complex. So I'm in that court. Yes, right. it's not going to be. I'm just saying, like, we still need the south side. I'm just saying that we, maybe we can... I don't know if we can, you know, repaint those lines. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Maybe he'll do sure. a bit of it there. I just think the number of players is, is quite high and growing, and um, so that's a good thing, I'd say. But I'm, I'm interested in, you know, uh, there's a group that's willing to 
uh, take part in a committee and things of that nature to work with TCRAB or whomever to, to further this. Uh, well, TCRAB really is meant to be committed to the sports complex, not yeah. this, but you know, another location I wasn't sure about that it was a basketball court at Shady Grove Park. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if we, I mean, that doesn't help with nets, but I don't know if we could paint lines on those courts because that would fit three or four pickleball. I believe it was well, three to four, yes, ma'am. Right. I know three. And, but I don't, I don't know how much the basketball court is used there. Um, I don't know. I would have to throw my net and check it in. Right. But while we're talking on this recreation stuff, benches for the complex have been ordered or should be ordered this week and when will they be here i will check and, and how many did we get i know well it depends on the final price i'll double check on all that the the text i got was benches i know we were looking at three but i don't know that that we ordered all three but there's we're trying to wrap that up Another area of interest is the Army Corps of Engineers floodplain management services study. We should have a report, hopefully in March, to bring to the board um, for this Dean Hatchy portion. And they started this very study as well. Um, and then, like I said, we added the sidewalks and updated road projects. Um, and I'm still waiting on an answer from Swanee River Water Management District on some of these particular um, roads and drainage issues, Turner Road and Ellison Road, and I have not received an answer or a commitment from them. So I will continue to follow up with those. Funding, I'm afraid, is going to be an issue. And those are projects that would probably qualify for resilient Florida funding, but we know that's going to be a way for the study to be done and then apply for those funds. So, do I have any questions? I've never heard, I haven't heard much of it. What is it required? Oh, just a, it's like a tennis. It's, like it's, it's similar to it's tennis. It's similar to tennis. It's a tennis smaller scale racket. Just a smaller yeah. kind of a racket and a little, little small little pickleball. It's, a, it's like a badminton. It's kind of like a badminton. Smaller scale tennis. Smaller scale tennis. It's just a different. I've heard it's a very good sport for folks who maybe play tennis at a different stage in their life. And it also, from what I understand, allows for maybe more socialization because you're much closer to each other and there's more people on a court. So it, it's, um, I think, less active. So it's easier on hips and knees and probably elbows and shoulders. Well, I know the group, I've been speaking with a group for a while, and they're trying to move we Crawford Hill weekly. Uh, they meet over there, and it's a, it's a nice facility that quite a number of folks are participating in. And so the answer is, can we progress to that kind of a, a potential? <clears throat> so, uh, Google it. Did you say yay? <laughs> 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 <laughs>